Welcome to day 376 of our DSO journey. I'm Ed Krasenstein here with my twin brother, Brian. And remember, these videos are being sponsored by NFT Tech. They are an investor in Clout Feed. Why so are you this, dressed like me? Why are you trying to copy me? No, you're dressed like me. Okay, move on. So yesterday, there's a lot of news, uh, a lot of things to talk about today. Um, more Elon Musk stuff going on. So of course, Elon Musk, he bought that 9.2% stake in Twitter and became the largest shareholder. But Dow Dow, they were actually contemplating the idea of a takeover Dow, which would launch coinciding with Dow Dow. And it would be a Dow to essentially buy out a Web2 social media site and then basically turn it into a Web3 site or Web3 protocol. And Elon Musk kind of kind of, I guess, beat Dow Dow to the punch with that. He actually bought Twitter out. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know if you can say beat him to the punch, but TakeOver Dow was going to kind of do what Elon did. So Dow Dow kind of jumped all, jumped all over this idea, and they said that they're now adding Dogecoin to their platform. So you, you're going to be able to buy Dow tokens in various Dows, not only using ETH, Bitcoin, DSO, and some other like USDT, but you're going to be able to use Dogecoin as a way to purchase Dow coins. And I think they did this as a way to kind of be like, hey, Elon, look, you can, you know, we can create this Dow that kind of apes into Twitter. Uh, they also tweeted, they also tweeted saying, what if you can buy Twitter with Doge? We're excited to announce that Dow Dow will be the first Dow platform to accept Doge. This is a major shift from existing paradigms, where investing in DAOs is usually with ETH and marks a compelling new use case for all Doge holders. It's a really good idea. There are a couple of press releases posts. I know there's one on CryptoGlobe.com. Uh, there's another press release that said there are plans in the works to launch a DAO that acquires a stake in Twitter and advocates for Twitter to embrace Web3 functionality. So again, that's referring to the takeover DAO. Previously, it wasn't specified that it was actually going to be Twitter or just a social media site. But I think now the main idea of the takeover DAO will be to gather money, gather governance, and then buy some of Twitter. Yeah, like, like imagine that. Imagine if, imagine if a DAO was launched that accepted Dogecoin as an invest, investment mechanism, and then that DAO would buy a substantial stake in Twitter and then get a board <laughs> on the board of directors somehow of the company like Elon has. Uh, I, like, like this is the, it's like so futuristic thinking, but it is something that I think could be possible. I don't know exactly how you would have a DAO having a board seat. That might not, that might be a little bit more Well, the, what happens is a DAO appoints one of their own to the board and the, that's that what individual is basically a puppet, I guess you could say, for the governance of the DAO. Yeah, and I, I think that they're doing two things here. Number one, they're kind of marketing DSO to Dogecoin holders and Dogecoin enthusiasts, which are people that follow Elon Musk primarily because of Elon's uh, infatuation with Dogecoin. But they're also trying to get Elon's attention, which I'm not really sure if that's going to work or not. Uh, but also, I, I think just get broad attention and there's not there's nothing else like it where you can actually create a DAO in a few easy steps which is what DAO DAO will be when it launches sometime in May uh, every time they add a new currency that you're able to invest in these DAOs with it's going to be a whole new like promotion mechanism because you're going to be opening the eyes of that of the uh, enthusiasts around that particular crypto. So in this case, Dogecoin. So I, I love that they're doing this. It's a great way, a great marketing plan. Um, it's also great to be able to invest in DAOs with as many possible cryptos as, as possible, because that just opens things up to everyone rather than just specific crypto holders. Yeah, for sure. I could see, you know, like a DAO coming on, a Doge DAO coming on that gathers money to send a statue of Doge to the moon. Couldn't you see something like that materializing and actually raising enough money to send a statue of Doge to the moon? I, 
I could see something like that. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I could imagine all kinds of all kinds of possible DAOs uh, based on what Dogecoin holders would want. And now they don't need to use Ethereum. They don't have to sell their Doge to get Ethereum to enter a DAO. They can use Doge to enter a DAO and DAO DAO if if that's what they'd like to do. Well, so Elon owns 9.2%. So how much would a DAO need to own in order to grab that board seat? Like, it's do you not, think they'd have to overtake Elon and get 9.3%? Do you think, you know, is it like an 8% stake? Would that get them on the board? I, you know, you know I, I'm, not sh- I'm not sure exactly how they go about appointing board members. Maybe somebody can chime in and, and, and say, but uh, I would assume that if you own more than more than Elon, you'd be pretty privy to a board seat. I, I think most board board of directors are kind of in place based on their shareholdings as well as uh, I, I know that they offer board seats to people. I, I believe based on like what they're what they're doing in the world. So I, I don't know. I, I I would I'm not qualified to really answer that. I don't think. So do you think Elon can could back? back a takeover DAO or do you think he would maybe help promote it? I, I know he made some posts on Twitter about the whole editing of posts. So he, he kind of wants to get the community's feedback on decisions. So that's exactly what a DAO would do is it kind of takes the community members, puts them into this project, into this DAO and allows the community to govern, gov- govern the actions of the company based on votes. So I think Elon would be would really like this idea, especially if it's something decentralized, like a DAO. Well, exactly. I mean, it seems in line with what he wants. He wants a decentralized uh, decision-making body at Twitter so that everybody gets to decide on things. Uh, you can see that clearly by him posting polls and then then trying to push for features and changes that those polls suggest. So a DAO would be the perfect thing for that. I mean, I I could definitely see him getting behind a DAO as being a board member or substantial shareholder of Twitter, Uh, whether it's going to be one that's launched on DSO or not, who knows. But the fact that Doge is now involved, uh, I think that's big. Yeah, so anybody who's interested in being part of a DAO that takes over Twitter, DAODAO.io, it's launching in less than a month now. And with it, it's going to be the takeover DAO. And well, we don't know it, if it, it could be could be a month, a month and a half, sometime in May. So just to clarify, it's coming it soon. May. So follow DAODAO.io. You can buy NFTs which represent DAO coins in the DAO for the DAO DAO DAO. The DAO 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 is actually a DAO itself. So, you, but you can also buy coins in other DAOs once it launches. And Takeover DAO is going to be one of them. So, if you're interested in it, stay tuned. It's coming soon. Uh, be sure to follow our videos because we're going to be giving a lot of updates on this as as it emerges. But in other news, uh, Mossified had some discussion about a redesign of DSO and Diamond Drive. Yeah, so uh, if you take part in the chain surf discussions, uh, which some of you may, some of you may not, uh, Ed Moss was in there and he was talking about some things he's working on. And it appears, uh, at least according to Paul Burke, who brought this up, is that the Diamond app uh, node is actually being reworked and reimagined. Uh, Mossified is helping to redesign it. Um, in addition to that, Mossified at Moss is also trying to work with one of the uh, growth marketers to, to change DSO.org. So DSO.org is kind of like the landing page for all anybody wanting to know what DSO is. Uh, but he's trying to kind of change it so that they can utilize marketing funnels uh, so that if you're going to DSO.org for one thing, say you're a developer versus being an investor or a creator, it would kind of cater your experience on DSO.org to teaching you what's in it for developers. Uh, And Ed actually made this post on Chainsurf and he said, I'm helping one of the growth marketers we just hired to re-architect the site. And this is DSO.org. So it's more clear based on each audience segment. And ETH has been a good example. And I'm not sure what that last part was referring to. But 
I, I think that this is a great idea. I think people go to DSO.org and they get overwhelmed because there's so much going on. Are, are you an investor? Are you looking to buy creator coins? Are you a developer looking to develop on the DSO blockchain? Are you just a creator looking to make posts? And all these people need different things and are asking different questions. So if you can kind of segment it and kind of funnel it in a way that it caters to what that person is there for, I think that's big. Um, can I, can I, I talk think real that, fast? Can I talk? Yeah. I think when he said, and ETH has been a good example of this, I think what he meant was ETH has done a really good job at doing the segmentation in these funnels. I think that's what he yeah. was referring to. Yeah, and, and that's that's so true. I, I mean, Ethereum, some, you might be there for DeFi, you might be there for NFTs, you might be there for DAO. So I, I think Ethereum does a great job at kind of segmenting uh, their audience. And that's what that's what DeSo needs to do. And, and I have full confidence in Ed Moss. He's probably... He's, he's one of the smartest people. I know I said this about several others. <laughs> you know, when you <laughs> say this, so, when you say this about like 20 people, your word was only like three really or four. But, but Ed, we've, we've had the opportunity to talk to him uh, at the Octane meetings, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, community events. And he really knows the marketing aspects of things. So I'm looking forward to seeing what, how Diamond App changes as well as how Diso. Well, so you need to, you can't to stop using the same word. You could say, don't say one of the smartest people I ever talked to. That was Salil Sethi. He was one of the smartest people you ever talked to. Ed Moss could be one of the most, um, use a different word, like uh, intellectual or intelligent person you ever spoke to. At least they have their own, you know, adjectives to go along with them. <sighs> I'll try and do better. But uh, as you try and say, I shouldn't be grouping people, uh, you wore the same shirt as me. So I, I don't know if you should really be talking. I've been wearing this shirt for like three days. I just put another shirt on. We're just so excited about NFTZ that we wear these shirts every day. All right, yeah. So uh, did you mention how Paul Burke made a post with the images of the new Diamond app? Yeah, so this is, he actually made a post of, yeah, the, so the landing page for Diamond app and it shows a Goldberry uh, testimonial and, it, and it's, it's basically a testimonial by Goldberry. Yeah, and it, it says, says that we've made more on Diamond than any anything else we've ever tried, and uh, I believe Goldberry because she's definitely a hit on on Diamond. That whole band is. Yeah, for sure. So I'm looking forward to the re new re redesign. I think it's going to be great for onboarding new users and funneling them into the segment that they want to be funneled into. Absolutely. But in other news, uh. Bitcoin Miami is coming up uh, very soon. And Alex Valaitis said that DSO will be there. And he also said that there's, they have something special planned for DSO there. He didn't tell us what it is, but he did say that more info will be coming soon. Yeah, we wanted to make it. Uh, we can't, we have some things going on that we're not going to be able to make it. Uh, tickets to Bitcoin Miami are like $1,000. So it is out of some people's price ranges, I assume. Uh, you can also get the whale ticket, which is like $24,000. So if you are a Bitcoin whale or a crypto whale, it might be something you consider. But, but we'll, we'll try and make the next, the next event in Miami. It's three hours away, but uh, right now it's just a really bad time for us. And our saw friends or our saw fiends made a post yesterday. And they are working on a really cool project. It's a VR graffiti simulator app and NFT graffiti collectible marketplace all kind of together. And it's coming this summer. It's coming this summer to DSO. Uh, they posted a video showing an example of it on their, on their DSO account. Again, it's Aerosol Fiends. And you can check it out there. I'm, I'm excited about it. I want to see like, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people who, like graffiti a lot of probably some graffiti artists on DSO who would like to share some of their graffiti mint and sell as nfts it's gonna be pretty cool yeah and, and i love how a lot's going on behind the scenes uh, summer's still several months away so there it's definitely a project that they're going to be working hard on uh i know that there's another app that's trying to integrate with DSO. we're actually we might have them on tomorrow on our show uh there's a lot going on and Things might be quiet, but that doesn't mean they're quiet behind the scenes. Yes, yeah, so uh, the founder of India's largest crypto exchange, uh, Wazer X, actually uh, direct messaged It's Aditya on Twitter. 
uh, praising him uh, for his Mint as NFT project. So if you don't know what Mint as NFT is, uh, it's basically, it basically allows any user on Twitter to reply to any post and tag at uh, Mint as NFT, and it will mint that post as an NFT and allow the original poster to claim that NFT, but it's minted on DSO. So it's a great segue into DSO for people who are outside of DSO. Uh, it's, it's big, it kind of has been going viral because people are posting, posting it everywhere. But uh, the founder of the exchange of, it's called Wazerx, the largest exchange in India, DM'd it's the deep debt and basically asked like if he's involved in DSO and asked for more information. Uh, things like this is what we need. We need things that can segue people over to DSO and kind of bring them over without them knowing that they're actually coming over right away. Uh, others also message it, it's Aditya. Um, Param.at, which is a major smart contract developer uh, on the Ethereum blockchain contacted him, as well as a software engineer at MathWorks. So it's working. Uh, great job, it's Aditya. You're getting the attention of people outside of DSO and uh, definitely you're a value to the community. Yeah, definitely. He's been doing so much for DSO. Uh, Elgin, Elgin yesterday bought $10,000 worth of 100's creator coin. Of course, yeah. Elgin and 100, they're both DSO OGs here from pretty much the very beginning. Uh, and Elgin made a post after he, after he bought this $10,000 worth of 100 coin saying that he did it for a few reasons. Number one, to amplify the voice of a positive creator, which 100 definitely is. Uh, number two, to observe and monitor feedback to a future purchase. So once you see the feedback. And number three, for a period of time, support a creator who adds value to the community. 100 definitely adds plenty of value to the community. So congratulations to 100. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> Awesome move, Elgin. Uh, keep up the good work in stimulating the DSO, the DSO ecosystem. Yeah, if 100's an original uh, gangster on DSO, uh, congrats, uh, you deserve it. And uh, it's nice to see some creator coin buys because I, I do think creator coins are gonna make a comeback once the number of daily active users picks up a little bit. And NFTZ has hit 5,000 followers on Twitter. 5,000 followers on Twitter. I think it's at the time of this video, I think it's more like 5,019 or so. But uh, yeah, we're building up the Twitter account and Van Halen is doing a great job with that as is Boss and Valter. They're, they have been really focused on building the Twitter account for NFTZ and it's looking good. It's, you know, it, it's a good way to bring outsiders into DSO, especially Ethereum NFT collectors on DSO. So keep up the good work, guys. Uh, you're doing an amazing job. Yeah, we've been trying to target some Ethereum uh, NFT collectors because we want to kind of transition them onto DSO. And I, I, I recommend anybody running a project on DSO, a node on DSO, you try and build your Twitter account because that's what's going to help help uh, not only um, amplify what's happening on DSO because you can obviously retweet DSO stuff, uh, but it's going to help the whole ecosystem as you kind of open up some eyes to the DSO blockchain. So try and build your Twitter accounts if, you're, if you have a project out there. Yes, yeah, Story's done a great job of this. Uh, Supernovas has done a great job of this. Uh, there's a couple, couple apps that are doing a really good job building their Twitter presence. And I think it's in the long run, it's going to pay off. Um, so Verifier made a post, I think it was last night or this morning. Uh, they're actually a project that's being run by Randir. Who else? Randir, Venom, and Major 2001. And they're trying to come up with a solution for verification on DSO. And in doing so, they want to create something called a user verification DAO. That's in the future. For now, they've lowered their founder reward to 20%. And, and any investors who buy their and hold their coin their creator coin and DSO are going to get early access to their Chrome extension that comes out sometime soon. Uh, they're going to be setting out the rules for verification, going to allow for discussion about verification on their Discord, which is, I think, when they create tiers Discord. And I'm looking forward to it because I think we do need a solution for verification. There's so many people who deserve to be verified, but DSO kind of just put that on the back burner for now. Um, 
Uh, Ver Verifier is also partnering. They have partnered with Creators, Musai, Jeff Hawkins, Scott Coin, and Marlon JM2K for this project. So it's going to be interesting to see how this materializes. I know we've been hearing verification by associations coming sometime soon. This is another solution that might, you know, it might end up being better. Maybe they'll take some of the verification by associations to, and implement it into their project as well. But I love the idea that it's going to be a DAO. I think that's going to be really cool. Yeah, if they could figure out a way to actually profit from it and then give that profit back to the DAO coin holders, I think that would be big because that's how they're going to get further investment into the DAO. If there's, if it's just a DAO that has a purpose rather than a, I guess, dividend, uh, it's going to be more difficult to get people to invest. So, if so, my recommendation to Randy or and the team is. Figure out a way that you can you can kind of make a profit and then provide that money back to the Dow coin holders because that that will be what attracts investors. I think. Good point. And what were the top hashtags for the last twenty four hours? Once again, Natter Verify Star Geezer, Geezer Please was number one. Uh, number two was Deso, followed by photography, art, and NFT. Congratulations, uh, Stargeezer, for being up there. Um, I know you're not verified yet. I don't know if it's going to happen, but maybe when Verifier comes out, you'll be one of the first. Yeah, definitely deserves it. Uh, so the top earners yesterday, um, yesterday $8,860 was earned uh, on DSO in the last 24 hours by 1,220 different creators. This number continues to be uh, elevated over the last few weeks. So it's Good to see some uh, residual uh, people staying around uh, from those promotions they did and from that spike to $99. So I'm happy to see that. Seven creators earned at least one D. So this is down a little bit. Um, typically, it's around 11 or so. Uh, so down a little bit, not a huge deal. Two creators earned 10 D. So uh, one of those, of course, was Dow Dow, and the other one was Seals. Uh, Dow Dow earned $6,870. Uh, followed by Seals, Spunk Art, Clout Punk, 100 with that big founder award from the sell, from the purchase of their creator coin by Elgin. Uh, Natalie Art, The Junkyard Waltz, Nix McCoy, Unicat, and Disruptpreneur. So congrats to all those people. Congratulations. Yeah, it's good to see some new faces in there as well. Uh, Open Prosper, they welcome their welcome back page, of course, shows people who have been inactive for over 30 days who have just come back and taken an action. And one person I noticed on that list was Brandon, Brandon, let me get this right, Brandon T. Webb, who had been gone for 52 days before coming back. Brandon is a New York Times bestselling author uh, of The Red Circle, Steel Fear, and several other books. Uh, he's also a digital entrepreneur, writer, investor, and also a former Navy SEAL sniper. Kind of, kind of cool. Uh, he's verified on DSO as well. So he was one of the people to get verified back in the day, an OG of DSO. Uh, he returned and he made a post just simply to make a post that said, quote unquote, if it was easy, everyone would do it. Not sure exactly what he's referring to. Maybe DSO, you know, maybe Web3. Maybe it's something I'm, I just have no clue about. But welcome back. Welcome back, Brandon T. Webb. Good to have you back. And community events today at 11 a.m. Eastern time on Clubhouse is the weekly Crypto Ladies on the Mic room. Uh, it's, the topic is the power of support. With DSO Chats, Miss Katie Ann, Michelle Lord, Wildography, Clout Women Unite, Debo M, Izzy, Natalie Art, Ayla Croft, Sabira, Kate Pogan, Infrared Artist. So definitely check that out. Those rooms are really cool. I love the ladies on the mic rooms. Um, men get to listen for the first hour and then they are brought on stage to talk to the ladies after that hour is up for another hour. At 1 p.m. Eastern time on Vibe Hut is the people needed for success with Juan Delinsky. Of course, the, Juan Delinsky is the creator of Vibe Hut. Awesome guy. We got to meet him in LA. Uh, Mr. Subscription. Mr. Subscriptions. Um, Definitely check that out at 1 p.m. Eastern time on Vibe Hut. But if you haven't checked Vibe Hut out yet, it's a really awesome app where you have these one-on-one -on -one conversations. Uh, just really cool. Check it out. At 2 p.m. Eastern time on Entra is Web3 Wednesday with Sean Tron, Caleb, 
Carrie Silverman and many others. Uh, again, Antra is an awesome app. Uh, the discussion around Web3 is really cool because it's not just DSO, they talk about Web3 in general. And there's a lot of really, really smart and intelligent people there to talk with. I think that's all we have for today. Uh, quite a bit to talk about today, but uh, we'll talk to everybody else tomorrow.